Live uh, with Mr. Mitch Reback. Um, Mitch, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes out of your day. Uh, as I said before, I know you're a busy person. You run a a, a, a large real estate team down in uh, Florida, and, uh, and and excited to talk to you today about your transition over to EXP. Uh, I don't like to spend a lot of time on you know your whole real estate story, but I will ask you just a couple questions just to sort of. Um, help the audience get to know you and, and me personally get to know you. How long have you been doing it, Mitch? How long have you so, been? Uh, actually, yesterday was my 17th anniversary. No kidding. So, yeah. That's great, man. Well, uh, happy anniversary, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I guess. I, I think that was a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And, and so um, how did you end up getting into real estate? What were you doing before real estate? And then how did you end up getting into real estate? Yes, yeah, so I was, um, I mean, I've, I'm a chronic entrepreneur. I've had 22 companies in 38 years. Uh, my, um, before real estate, I was the first online dating service. So nope. I, uh, like Match.com? Well, we almost bought Match.com, actually. Um, we, were bef we were before them, way before them, actually. Uh, but we were a private label group. I built a private label company for radio stations. So I was Mr. Internet in the radio industry and... Um, and then in 2000, when the market crashed, we were just about two months away from close, uh, selling the company and closing on it. And I would have retired at 40 uh, with a ridiculous amount of money and said, here I am, real estate. <laughs> uh, the market crashed. I lost everything. I went from very, very, very rich to very, very, very poor, very, very, very quick. <laughs> wow. What an interesting story, man. So, okay. Um, so how did the idea of, uh, okay, so how, how do you go from running, a, 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 you know, an online dating service to the idea of getting into selling residential real estate. Yeah. So my, uh, one of my best friends convinced me, he's like, you'd be so good in real estate. And I'm like, I don't really like realtors. Why would I do that? And um, he said, you'd be really good at it. You need to get back on your feet. And I literally, when I say I lost everything, I had about $14,000 to my name. I had lost $80 million. It was really bad. Um, and so uh, I did it and I sold my first house my first week. Uh, even with 9-11, I started the day before 9-11. And 9-11, we stopped. And uh, that Wednesday through Friday, I actually learned how to write a contract and then sold my first house at an open house that Saturday. Wow. Uh, and it, it was easy. I thought real estate's the easiest thing I've ever done besides paintball. I own a paintball business for a while. Um, and that was way more fun. <laughs> Did you say you lost $80 million? Yeah, it was a bad day. <laughs> Bitch, that had to be a completely humbling experience. Um, yeah, you know, you, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I don't know, it really, it bothered me for about three or four days. And then I said, all right, well, you know, I'm 40 years old. I gotta, I gotta work. I gotta figure out something. And at the time I got offered a lot of jobs in the radio industry for very large dollars, but it meant leaving on Sundays, coming home on Fridays, which I've been doing for six years at that point. And I just decided with my girlfriend and my wife that I need to do something different. And then I got into real estate. Okay. And, and so you, and it sounds like when you got into real estate, you started having some success right away because you probably had that, that entrepreneurial uh, work ethic. In other words, you knew, you knew what it took to be successful in business. You didn't necessarily know the real estate business, but you knew that, you know, if, 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 if you put in the effort that ultimately you could be rewarded uh, for, for that effort. Correct. Yeah. So, so for years I've always, I came up with solutions to my problems for years being an entrepreneur and one thing was consistent with every business I've ever owned. And it's all about lead generation. So like you got to capture leads, you got to nurture leads, you got to close them, then create a customer for life. Every single product in the world follows that rule. Um, and so I knew that going into this. And I said, all right, well, how do I generate leads when I know nobody? So open houses made sense to me. So I sold 36 homes my first year, uh, 28 from open houses, six from other means, 50 my second year, 80 my third year, 80 my fourth year, and then I opened the brokerage. Nice, nice, man. Okay, so what was your what was you and your team's volume last year in 2017? Uh, we did um, 700 transactions right around there for 100, just under 150 million. Wow, 700 transactions for 150 million. That's uh, that's that's pretty amazing, man. And uh, what, what what market are you in down there, Mitch, in Florida? Uh, we're in Brevard County, Cocoa Beach, Melbourne. Okay. All right. So that, that's just a plug. So if anybody is in that area and wants to send uh, or has a buyers or sellers in that area, wants to send Mitch a referral, I'm sure he'd right. be glad yeah. to take it or pass it off to one of his top agents. Exactly. We love that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so 150 million, um, you know, how was you, before you guys moved to EXP, how was your brokerage structured? Uh, sure. So we did, uh, 
we had traditional 70, 30 split, 60, 40, depending on the agent. Uh, and then we had our lead system, which is what I'm known for around North America, uh, which I had about 25 to 30 agents on that. Uh, so we generated folks from traditional splits plus our lead, our lead system. And we had, we had, you know, transaction coordinators. We had a pretty big operation. It was a $100,000 a month operation. Okay. And so was everybody, is everybody in your brokerage on your team or were some of them independent and some of them worked for you in like a buyer listing agent type role? Yeah. So we had, um, I would say they're all on my team, but we were all one team. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't have like an individual team within the system. I just had our, our agents that run leads and our regular agents. And, you know, we made money from both of them. Okay. And not, and, not a lot of money, by the way. Most brokers don't make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the first word is broke, right? In brokerage. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you, the funny thing is, is I remember, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was mastermind agent, uh, Mike Sharon. Uh, I yep. think I heard you on his podcast for the first time and it was talking specifically about your, uh, your online lead generation. Talk just a little bit about that. T tell, tell, what does that look like? Yeah. So basically, uh, you know, when I got into the business, I said, I right, what's the, the hardest thing for most realtors is generating leads. And the highest thing for most brokerages is, is recruiting and, re, and, and retaining. So I said to myself, if I can bring on agents that, uh, that are okay, but don't know how to generate leads, um, then I could do that. And they would probably never leave because they become addicted to my leads. So I was addicting people to leads before, the, before Zillow. And then unlike a lot of people, you know, brokers who use, use it strictly as a, re, a retaining tool, I wanted to generate revenue from it. We always did. We averaged the last couple of years, like last year, we did 329 transactions from leads. Wow. So you 329 transaction, is that specifically from just generating buyer leads like a Zillow or a Commissions Inc. or, or one of those platforms? Yeah, I do basically pay-per-click. Uh, I'm not really going to give Zillow or Julia or Realtor.com my money. I don't do any of that. Yeah. It's all about just AdWords and, and generating enough leads to support my agents. Okay. So are, are you one of those people that actually mastered like, AdWords, pay-per-click, SEO, I mean, um, organic Google traffic, all that stuff. Is that, is that, yeah. is that, is that kind of, I suck at all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, actually for pay-per-click, I've used a company called home gain for 10, 12 years now. Okay. Uh, so I generate all my traffic through them. Uh, I'm terrible at SEO, but you know, uh, but I'm really, really good at lead conversion, which is okay. really good where it comes. Right? You can generate leads all day long and, I'm sure many people listen to this generate a lot of leads, but most of them don't convert them. Okay. Now, are you funneling your uh, your online traffic through uh, an ISA staff, or is that going right out to your agents? Um, we do both. We have an ISA staff and our agents. So the agents make the first phone call. The ISAs fall behind, make sure the searches are set up, and make sure they, um, you know, they they're doing what they're supposed to do. And then the ISAs do all the nurturing. Okay. And so, how do you? What is your conversion rate on internet leads? Because the average is about what two 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 percent one to two percent. Uh, average is actually about three quarters of a percent. That's the real average. Okay. Uh, somehow that keeps getting bumped up, but it's a lie. Um, the uh, we close. So we have two different ways we look at leads. We have we call short term leads and long term leads. Short term leads are a lead that I generate this year that closes this year. Mm -hmm. so last year was a lead that was generated in 2017 that closed in 2017, and those were at three point eight percent. And these are raw registration leads. And when I call leads, I call every single lead we get. Bad phone numbers, bad emails, those are all combined into that number. And then our long-term uh, conversion is just about 6 point cents, 5.99 something. Uh, and those are leads. Like last year, we closed 12 transactions from 2009 leads. Right. So that's those leads in 2009 are just are now closing at about 6%. Okay. Wow. That's fantastic, man. So um, that's obviously much better than even the made-up average of 2 to 3%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's a beta beverage. I, I mean, I deal with a lot of a lot of brokers all over North America calling me about their lead systems, and I have yet to see anybody doing better than one percent. How do you? So, the, I mean, the obvious question is, how do you do that? Like, what is the um, following? Solid, solid systems and accountability. Okay. If hiring the right agents is really probably the biggest thing. I I, I say this in a loving way. I, I based my entire model based on mediocrity. Mm -hmm. um, I don't give leads to agents that. Are, making hundred thousand dollars a year without leads. Yeah. I'll never make leads. I like agents that are making 25, 30 grand a year or new and they have no way of generating sales and I can help them go from 30 grand a year to hundred grand a year. All of my top agents in my, in my brokerage, one on my team 
uh, were brand new when they started with me. Okay. And so you've probably learned, as I've learned also, is that um, when you started into the game, uh, you generated internet leads, and then you quickly learned that uh, everybody started generating generating internet leads, right? So you had to offer another value component. So your value component then, it sounds like, was conversion, right? You had this, the tools, systems, resources in place to convert. And, and the funny thing is, is like, we're constantly evolving as team leaders, right? So I don't want to, I won't get into, you know, what happened next, but I would imagine somewhere along the road that you learned, um, and it sounds like early on that recruiting retention was, uh, was it's multifaceted, right? So recruiting and retention, um, a part, a piece of that was, you know, Hey, I'll provide them leads, right? It's like crack. They can't, they can't leave. And then, you know, okay. So everybody starts buying leads. And, and then, so you're changing your value proposition again and again and again, and ultimately, you know, now you're at EXP, and I know a lot of uh, I know a lot of agents or a lot of team leaders thought that, you know, ultimately that this would be the way that we would solve our recruiting and retention problems because we're offering something that uh, has never been, we've never been able to offer them something agents like something like this before. Like you had your independent brokerage, but you couldn't give them stock, right? You couldn't, or you could, but it wasn't worth anything. Right. And, you know, you, they didn't have the opportunity. You could build out some intricate scale where you could do uh, some sort of revenue share. But EXP comes along and, and does it before we all do. Right. And uh, so ultimately, you know, it's like it's almost a no brainer. So you see all these big independents across the country. I mean, yourself, Jay Kinder, Mike Reese, um, Al Stasic, a lot of these guys, uh, Curtis Johnson, they're, they're all they're, they're all moving over because they saw the same challenges that we did as team leaders, right? And now ultimately uh, we think that hopefully we found, you know, the answer to that recruiting retention uh, problem because who's going to leave a company that is generating them two, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month in, in revenue share, right? I mean, it's just, it would be asinine to think that they would leave that. And even if they did leave your team, they still probably wouldn't leave EXP. So it probably wouldn't have a big effect on you. But let me digress a little bit. I know you want to dive into that. Um, okay. Tell me, so, okay, so your team, the structure of your team then is uh, is you. You have how many agents right now? Uh, so we have 65 on our team now. Okay, so you've got 65 agents and you've got uh, a couple of ISAs, right, that are helping call the leads. You've got contract management, you've got listing management, and you've got marketing. Anything else? We actually got rid of all that stuff. Did you? So we had all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So EXP is giving me the ability to really streamline our operation uh, because I don't need a marketing person right now because we've taught all of our agents to use Breakthrough Broker. Or bro yeah, Breakthrough Broker. Okay. Uh, and that, that stuff's great. Uh, transaction management, um, we basically put it back on the agents to do that. Uh, one of my goals, and you know, I'm in a different place than a lot of people, you know, 57 years old. Um, and my goal is to help my agents now become who I was in 2004 with me and five agents. Okay. So I'm trying to teach my agents that are with me now how to become independent and break away from me. I'm going to retire in two and a half years, uh, at least from working 80 hours a week. And uh, for me, because I care so much about my people, my main goal over the next two and a half years is to help them become more independent. If I if I held their hands and baby, you know, baby them, continuing to baby them, uh, it wouldn't have worked. And that was one of the reasons I switched to EXP was to give them the ability to become more independent and and break away from me. Teach them how to fish, right? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So uh, my question for you then is is um, so you're, it sounds like you're teaching them to build a team within your team. Is that is that is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so the goal is, you know, right now, and, and a lot of my agents are doing that. A lot of my agents have two, three, four people under them. One has eight. Uh, and so my goal is to, you know, help them all, again, just be me. I made my most money and had my most fun in 2004 when uh, I had five agents, made a few hundred thousand dollars and didn't kill myself. Right. Yeah. We had a ball. Uh, you know, when we got to be big and 115 agents at one point, uh, it wasn't that fun anymore. You know, I kind of lost interest because it was like more like babysitting than it was growing or counseling. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and that's a, and that's the half. Ninety percent of the job is, and I should have been a psychologist, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so this this affords my ages now to be able to switch over their lives to be more independent. Well, some still depend on me, of course, but I can tell you, before we joined the EXP, I was averaging ten. 
calls from agents a day. I now get about five a week. Nice, man. That's awesome. So you're headed in the right direction. So, okay. So let's talk specifically then about, um, you're going along, you're very successful. You have your own brokerage. I mean, that's the pinnacle, right? You can't do any better than that. I mean, you run everything and this idea or this company comes along and it's called EXP and you hear about it and what happens? Yeah. So I had heard about it, um, three years ago. So two years before I joined and you know, the, the thing that I know now is I gave up, I, I my ego is in the way. I'm a big broker. I'm no. I mean, I've got two books out. I'm known really well around North America for what I do. Um, you know, I make really good money. Uh, why would I give my company away? Right. It didn't make sense to me. Uh, when I went to sell the company in uh, 2016, that's when I realized you can't actually sell a company. So I got stuck with this this thing going. All right, what do I do now? What's my exit strategy? I I built this company to sell. That's why I built any company that I built over the last 38 years. By the way, it's hard to say 38 years in one breath because it's so freaking long. Uh, but um, that's how long I've been self-employed. But when you realize you can't, you have no exit strategy, what do you do? I have a company worth three to four million dollars, but it really isn't worth anything because I can't sell it. Yeah. So that was when I really took a step back and looked at EXP on a, on a it was November 2016. Uh, and then I met with Jason Guessing in January. And so the biggest problem I was having was my brand because Tropical Realty is a big brand here. Yeah. And, you know, I spent a lot of years building that. He says, well, just be Tropical Realty Beachside powered by EXP. Yeah. Like, okay. Now I got to figure out the money because I was going to lose, um, instead of making a half a million dollars, I was going to probably lose a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, which we didn't, by the way. But that was when I was doing my projections. Uh, so I had to figure all that out and how that was going to work. But ultimately, I knew for my agents, most importantly, this is an amazing exit strategy for them because most my agents, you know, in, in our area, the average house is 220. You know, they're making 70 grand, 60 grand. They're doing okay in this, in this market. Yeah. So if I can get them to earn an extra 10, 20, $30,000 a year, how does that help them out? Yeah. It's amazing. And so, it, and so talk about then, uh, so you met with Jason, is this before you had even uh, given your team any idea that you were, you were contemplating a change? Oh, yeah. yeah, they didn't know till March. So I'm a huge believer in involving your team in all your major decisions because that's why they stay because they trust you. Right. Um, so I took all of, uh, I took my 34, now at the time we slimmed down to 65 agents. I got rid of all the agents I didn't want to deal with anymore, yeah. uh, but I couldn't sell the company. And so in March of uh, 2017, I sat down with 34 of my top agents and told them as best I could at the time, I'm a lot better now, on uh, what EXP was, and they 100% bought in. Everybody. That's great. That's great. Uh, and then we brought in the other agents um, in May. I still wasn't 100% sure, but if my agents said no, we wouldn't have done it. I wasn't going to lose my agents over it. Um, we still lost 25 agents when we switched over, but 19 had never sold a house. And because nobody had heard of EXP here, uh, and we were the first people in the county to be EXP. Uh, every broker in the county was calling my agents and telling them that it was a scam. It, you know, Mitch is screwing you and all that stuff. Um, but my 40 top agents all stayed. Uh, we lost six producers. Uh, out of that six, two have come back. And I can tell you, here's the measurement that I like is since June of 2017, only two agents have left. Wow. And wow, that's, Mitch. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Mitch, do me a favor. Talk about to, to the, so to that team leader or, or broker that's listening right now. I mean, th th just so you know, we went through the same thing. And, and, but talk about why people stay. What when you talk to your agents, why do you why do they stay? Yeah, so they stay for a couple of reasons. One, I'm a really good team leader, and and, and they trust me and they love me. I, so leadership, leadership one, right? Yeah. Uh, they. Um, they love that they don't have to get a hold of me or Pat now, my assistant, to get answers. They can go on the world and, and within a minute get responses to what they need. They love that. They love the tools. I could never have offered the tools that we offer these agents now. This wasn't going to happen. I couldn't afford it. Uh, and it took a little while for the culture to grow, but we're learning how to manage that culture better locally. Okay. And I see a lot of people around the country doing that now locally. Like, for instance, uh, tomorrow night we have a – um, we have 152 agents local that are that are part of EXP. Uh, we have a big event tomorrow night, social event. We're going to be doing those every two months. Um, so that was the only thing I saw lacking with what we were doing is the community part of it. And now we're building the community part. Uh, they most of the agents love the world. You know, some 
could care less, but most of the agents love it. Yeah. Um, and they, they love the compensation plan. Okay. And I, let me give you a quick story on that because it's really cool. Um, yeah, sure, please. Well, most people aren't going to do what I'm doing. I'm up to 342 agents and my rev share checks are big. And, you know, I'm planning on growing this really large, mainly for my granddaughter's disease and charity. But uh, one of my agents, Katie, is a great example. Katie came to me last January, January 2017, said, I don't know what to do. I make 70 grand a year. My daughter's going to college next year and it's 30 grand a year. I have no idea how I'm going to pay for that. I might have to leave real estate and try to find a job or something like that. And my only answer to her then was, well, sell more houses. If you made $150,000 a year, you could. She goes, well, I'm trying to enjoy my life with my, my daughter. My last year, I'm going to have her before she goes to college, which I get that. I mean, I, I didn't spend that time with my family, which I did when I was raising my kids. So uh, when we made the switch, I said, Katie, here's your opportunity. Here's your chance. So the first person she brings on is a, um, is a big team. And so she finally hit five agents a couple months ago. So this year, She's going to make about 28.5 on her rev share, right? And her college education for her daughter is 30 grand. EXP is paying for her college. Unbelievable. And she's still selling the same amount of real estate or probably a little bit more. You know what I mean? That's that's so powerful, man. It's like I have that exact conversation yep. with with agents who are at other brokerages. You know, it's like we we're, listen, I came from Keller Williams, right? We were still doing the exact same thing we did at Ke Keller Williams. But we just have it. We've added in these additional layers of passive income, right? I mean, it's incredible the type of impact that that can have. So oh, yeah. that's amazing, yeah. man. So I'm curious, how did she? And, and and you talk as much or as little as you want in detail about this. But how did she bring over? So it, this girl on your team, how did she have the influence to bring over another uh, big team? How did she do that? It was actually a friend of a friend. She okay. said, I heard this person is not happy at their brand name that they're at. And, and she called. And what I do for my agents locally, actually, I do this. I'm on the phone all day with agents all over the country now because I have agents in some states. Um, but I tell my agents all the time, I go, just bring them to me. You don't need to, to do all this. Just let me explain it. And so she brought them in my office with her team. And they loved it. They were saving. Uh, they figured they were saving $8,000 a month from the franchise that they were with. Wow. They were with, they were with Remax before. They're okay. saving eight thousand dollars a month in fees, just in fees. That makes sense. Yeah, that's amazing. So, so back up just a little bit because I want to talk a little bit more about um, when you actually, when you yourself decided right to take the idea to your to your team. Um, what did that look like? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. So I'm married. That's always a, a factor in all this stuff, right? So I went home to my wife, and I had another company making good money at the time. So it made it a little easier. Um, but I went home to my wife. I said, I said, you know how we never made, really made a lot of money and now we're making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month right now? I'm going to change that. Is that okay? She's like, what do you mean? I go, well, I'm going to give the company away. She's like, you just had an offer for $3 million. Why are you going to give the company away? And in the end, she said, when I explained it, she said, you know, you've never led me wrong. Go for it. <coughs> um, and uh, yeah, so when I got her blessing, I really, it was a Honestly, it was the hardest thing, but I'll be honest. It was a really weird thing that made me make the switch. Uh, I'm a universe guy. I think yeah. the universe sends you messages all the time. Uh, I had a chance to own Napster. I screwed that up. Uh, I don't like missing. That's a whole other story, a whole other. <laughs> Fascinating, great, man. Great, great story. And I don't know if I would have owned it, but I would own a piece of it. Uh, my best friend's son invented it, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but I kept seeing the numbers 11-11. I'd wake up in the middle of the night at 1-11 in the morning, I look at the clock today. It was eleven eleven, and literally for every single day, multiple times a day. Well, there's only so many times a day you can see eleven eleven or one eleven. So I looked on the numerology charts to see what it meant, and I was never into numerology. And it said you're going in the right direction. That was my final decider. And and I mentioned my granddaughter earlier. You know, with my granddaughter has a very rare disease. In fact, we're getting ready to do our, um, our charity golf event. And in fact, if you don't mind me plugging this, I'm doing my coaching for a cure thing right now. So I will coach people. Normally I charge between a thousand and two thousand dollars an hour. I will coach people on anything they want for uh, a two hundred fifty dollar donation to my charity. So I didn't mean to throw awesome. that in. There. Awesome. You but, heard? But Lola is um, she's my life. She's my purpose in life because of her disease. And I know that as a broker, I was never going to get to the point where I could support her. That disease. I couldn't do what I wanted to do with that disease. Uh, however, with EXP now, I have the ability to 
create however much money a month I want to create. It's up to me how much work I want to put in, right? Yeah. And so I know that when I'm done doing what I want to do over the next couple of years, I'll be at a couple million dollars a year. And it's in the pack that made it really impactful for me was the ability to take that money and when I die, ship that money over to a corporation with my family being in there and being licensed mm -hmm. to take that money, everything I work so hard for over the next however many years to go to that charity, go to my granddaughter, make sure she's all set. So those are all the factors that were going on in my mind when I made the decision. Yeah. Um, that, that was it. Man. Oh, okay. So, so you see this, you see this number 1111 and you go to the, the numerology chart and it says you're going in the right direction. So at that point you're like, Bam, uh, yep. I'm all in, right? Yep. So now I've got to, I've got, I've got to tell, I, I've told my wife, you know, she's on board to some extent, right? Yep. And then uh, the next thing that I'm, I've got to do is I've got to go to my team, and and and, and most of us we go to our leadership group first, and right. and and so we say we present it right as an opportunity, right. and it is is that. You said you had buy-in from almost everybody, with the exception of a few. Yep. Is, is when is this something that happened like right away? Did it take uh, a couple weeks? Did it take uh, a couple months? Or what did the timeline look like, Mitch? About about twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Okay. Yeah, they all. Went, I did a pretty good job explaining it. So the things that my agents were going to get, we're going to get. They were going to get a better split. Mm -hmm. Right. They're still going to get their leads. I didn't change their referral fee on that. Um, they were going to get better tools. They were going to get stock uh, and they were still going to keep our offices. So I still have two offices. So they were, the only thing they were going to see, I told my agents when we were doing the switch, I said, our culture locally is not going to change. The only thing that's changing is our operating system. Yeah. And they got that. And I told them from day, from the minute we had the meeting, I said, this is your decision. I'm making 40, 50 grand a month right now. I'm totally fine doing that forever. Yeah. However, this is a great opportunity for you guys. What do you want to do? So were you, before you went in and told your team, were you, is there any part of you that was reluctant or, or had anxiety or were you nervous at all? Or was this something that, Hey, I, I, you know, no matter what I, I'm, I'm moving forward. Um, no, cause if they said no, I was definitely not moving forward. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna lose everything that I built up at that point. They, they did. I uh, was, I nervous. Uh, I'm, I'm really close with my people. So I wasn't really nervous. Um, I mean, I was excited that the possibilities that they would say yes. Um, but I, again, I didn't, it was in a no lose situation for me. If I, if they said, yes, I got what I wanted to do. If they said, no, I'm still making 40, 50 grand a month, uh, which is the most I ever made as a broker ever. So it really was, it didn't matter to me. Uh, so I went in, one thing I've learned about sales, and this is one of the things about sales for your agents and individual agents if you get ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month coming in, and you know your mortgage is paid, your car, your car payments paid, you sell a lot more houses automatically. Yeah, because you're not stressing about money. Yep. So for me, I went in with the same thing. It's how I've always done my sales. I go in, I don't really care if I get the sale great, if I don't get the sale great. So when I went to my agents, I wasn't worried if they said no, I still win. If they say yes, I still win. Right. And so you were coming from a place of abundance and not scarcity, and and you know ultimately that's why you won the listing, right? Yes. Exactly. So, um, okay. So you got the buy-in from your team. Uh, logistically, how, how did that work for you? So you you have Tropical Realty, right? And then you just so you just change that to Tropical Realty powered by EXP. It, yeah. How did how was that perceived in the community? I mean, obviously, you 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 told me that some you were you had some malicious phone calls from other brokerages uh, calling your agent saying it was a scam. How did you deal with all that? Uh, it was tough. I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it was hard. But the first two months I switched, I was totally second guessing my decision. I didn't recruit anybody the first two months because I was too busy doing damage control. Yeah. Um, but I sat down with all my agents individually after we made the switch. And I said, look, give it six months. And at the end of six months, the worst case scenario is we'll switch back to Tropic Realty. Again, only two agents have left in 14 months. Yeah, that's and I think that's just a testament to obviously the loyalty to you and your leadership and, and everything that you're providing. And yeah, EXP and the, providing. yeah, and the hard part was, you know, EXP had no clue what they were doing. So we're moving over 40 people. They'd never done that before. Yeah. They had a bunch of new staff. And I think if they were to do it today versus then, I probably wouldn't have lost any agents. Yeah, I believe that. 
when they first came out and explained everything, um, they were talking more about revenue share than they were talking about as a real estate company. And the most important part for an agent, this is an amazing real estate company. Amazing. And by the way, you get a nice little benefit if you introduce people to the company. Right. right. And that's how I explain it to people all the time. I very seldom will get into rev share. Um, I really talk about introducing people to the company. That's how I grew Tropical Realty as big as it we were. Mm-hmm. And, is, and we give you referral fees, rev share, because um, those are things that agents understand. Uh, when I talk to teams and brokers, we have a different conversation because it's a different conversation. Uh, but I will tell people, uh, I would never recommend anybody becoming a broker ever. Uh, I owned a restaurant. That was the worst business I ever owned in my life yeah. until I opened a brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> So you heard him, folks. Yep. Don't go the brokerage route. It's yeah. not. Working. Yeah. If you're out there thinking about opening a brokerage, we need to talk. And yeah. I will tell you, and here's the thing I think with most people, you know, I, I started the brokerage because that's what I was taught, right? That's what you learn when you go to real estate school. Oh, you know, if you get good, you can open your own brokerage, blah, blah, blah. And as a business owner my whole life, I didn't want to be working for somebody else. I wanted to own the company. I've owned everything I've ever done. And what I realized is you can't change people. As an entrepreneur, that's the most frustrating uh, thing that I've dealt with in the brokerage. When I know that I can't help you become successful because in your heart you don't want to be successful, I don't know how to deal with that. And as a broker, I dealt with that every day. I just I hated it. Sometimes you want it more for them than they want it for themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. One of my classes I teach is called uh, uh, "It's about expectations." And I had a I won't tell the story because it's a long story, but I had a message from my dead dad, which is really cool. I, and he said, your expectations are not their expectations. And I changed my entire life because of that. Yeah. I no longer have expectations because in your life, all of your disappointments in your life are based on your expectations of others. Yeah. Yeah. I got rid of expectation. Changed my life. Yeah. That's uh, that is a true statement. Um, okay. So you talked a little bit about not being able to really, um, recruit or attract anybody for the first uh, 60 days because you were doing damage control. Um, talk about how that changed after that. Like what, what, when you find, when the dust settled and Tropical Realty became Tropical Realty powered by EXP, how did you really get into uh, cashing in on some of the relationships you built across the United States over the last, you know, 17 years or whatever that was? Sure. Well, uh, so a couple of things. Um, Gene Frederick, who I met during the process, and I became friends. Um, part of the deal with EXP was they would bring Gene Frederick out to do an, do an event for me. So I learned, saw how to do an event, and he did an amazing job. Uh, from that event, we had 100 people at that event, uh, 50 stayed for the lunch and learn part, uh, 20 joined. Uh, and so we've done a couple of those now. Every time we have a, a decent number join the company. Uh I made the mistake at the beginning of this, not thinking people were going to be as visionary as me. And I didn't reach out to most of the people that I know I didn't reach out to, which by the way, most of them are part of EXP now. They're just not part of me. Uh, I probably lost a couple hundred people easily that I didn't reach out to, um, which is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm still growing fine. Other than that, I reached out to people that I knew and just said, hey, check out what I did. Uh, Pretty cool stuff. And it took a little while. Um, we did our first, uh, let's see, by the, that June, we, I mean, that, that December, so first six months, we went up to 150 people. Yeah. Uh, and now we, we should hit close to, close to 500 by the end of the year. Yeah, that's awesome. So talk just really briefly about uh, what you would have done differently in order to tap into those hundred resources uh, or yeah. prospects that ultimately came over to EXP, but didn't come in over you. Yeah, I, I would have called them. That's simple. So, the, so, so that's simple. So the, the the answer to that is is people that you never in a million years thought would switch to EXP. You need to call and say hi to. And, okay. the, and I call and I call this. It's like internet leads. Um, it's what I said at the beginning. You get a capture. So someone that's interested, you got to nurture that, and then you you bring them on, and then you teach them how to become a customer for life. Bring on more people. It's right. The same, it's the same product. Um, it's it's a relationship business. Uh, you know, I I get calls on a daily basis from people in my downline to help them with brokers, especially. Um, I get calls from people from all over EXP. One of the things that I love about this company is here I am. The, if you called me today and said, Mitch, can you talk to a broker for me? I would talk to that broker for you. I get no financial benefit from you, right? But ultimately, I'm going to help you because that's our culture. And that's one of the things that I love. I and mean, we've had some bumps in the road with certain people around the country, which have been ironed out at this point. 
but for the for the whole, we have an awesome group of people who want to help everybody grow our company because we own the company, right? Yeah, yeah. So I want to blow a few people's minds, probably most in listening or or, or watching this. Um, I have to ask you, uh, what is your revenue share goal ultimately, Mitch? If you don't mind sharing, what, where do you hope to get that to? Yeah, so my retirement day is January 9th, 2021. Okay. Uh, that's the day I turned 60. Uh, and by the way, retirement for me is working 30 hours a week, 40 hours a week. <laughs> um, and, you love what uh, what's that? Because you love what you do, right? Well, I love what I do, and I'm a workaholic, so I couldn't give it up if I wanted to. Um, you know, I'll always bring on six to 10 people a year personally. That's my goal. Okay. Uh, and help my team grow. And, and But I'm going to do more traveling and stuff like that. But my goal at that point is to be at 2,500 agents and at least two to $3 million a year. Okay. 2,500 agents and two to $3 million a year for those of you who did not hear that. Amazing. Amazing. That is, that is awesome. And, and so you're, how do you, how will you continue to, to build that and move that forward? Will you continue with the lunch and learns and will you continue cashing in on some of the relationship so that you built across the United States? Is that essentially yeah, how you Little by little. Um, I think a lot of it is educating my, uh, the people that are under me on how to bring on just a couple people a year. Again, most people aren't going to do what I'm doing or have the reach that I have, which is, you know, understandable. But if I could bring, teach people how to bring on two people a year, four people a year, six people a year, what does the next 10 years look like for them in their lives? And that's kind of what I do now. I mean, I spend, I just did a webinar the other day on, on how to bring on a couple people. You know, most people aren't going to do what I do. Um, I'm, uh, my wife is retiring in July. I'm very excited about this. And we're going to hop in my car for somewhere between three and six months. And we're going to go stop at every city I have agents in and do an event. So we'll grow that way. Um, you know, I'll always bring on a few people personally every year. You know, if I bring on like six to 10 people a year, that'll, that'll work great to me. I'm yeah. at 34 directs right now. I'll be at 40 shortly. Um, and so, if I, again, my, I've always lived by contribution. That's how I've done my entire life. Right. And I know if I get out on the road, uh, and I've already done a bunch of them. I was in Atlanta recently, Boston recently, South Florida, San Diego, uh, doing events. Um, that's kind of my job is to help my team grow. Okay. That, if it helps them, it helps me, right? Yeah. Okay. And, and when you say you're doing these events, do you mean that you're doing uh, – they're specifically putting together like – uh, some sort of a value add class? Or are you actually doing like a, a lunch and learn geared toward EXP? Yeah, we do. A, so I learned from Gene because I think Gene's one of the best at it. Uh, so I have a couple of books I wrote. Uh, I run a couple of different classes, but my main one is called Kick It Up a Notch, okay. which is I can basically help anybody. I don't care who they are. I can help them double their business if they follow some of the, the things I do. Um, so we do that. It's about an hour and a half, two hour class. And we do it run separately. So you have you can go to the class and not go to the lunch and learn. And we find about 50, 60% stay for the lunch and learn. So we run them. I don't want to blind sign people. I know some people do that. And we're, oh, by the way, we're going to do another class now on this if you want to stay around. I like, to, I'm upfront. I'm very transparent. So people stay around. They know I'm going to be talking about EXP. Uh, and generally speaking, depending on how good the person follows up, you know, you'll get people. And so, again, if, if you do a, an event and you don't follow up with those people afterwards, you're not going to get anything. Yeah. You know, when I did the original event I did here, we had 100 people, 50 to the uh, 50 to the lunch and learn, 20 joined. Those 20 joined over three or four months. They didn't join that day. Right. But right. I stayed in touch with them. I put them onto an email drip campaign um, that is not consistent. It's not automated. I When I have something to say, I say it, which could be once a week, once every few weeks. Um, and every time I do that, I get two or three people coming in. I got two people coming in tomorrow that are from that. And I just nurture those people. And I'm here to help them. I do local coaching which has helped. Uh, I do a coaching class every couple of weeks. It's open up to any, any agent in the county. Uh, that's how I've been building my database. That's worked well. Yeah. Awesome. No different than following up with uh, buyers and sellers, right? It's the same thing. It's the same game. It's the same game. So, okay, I'll, I'll wrap this up, but I've got just a couple more questions for you. So, okay, so that agent or the broker um, that's listening or watching us right now who is thinking about making the move to EXP, what do you say directly to them? All right. So a couple of things. I, if I had done it three years ago when I first looked, I would have been, I'd be $1.9 million richer and I'd probably be at my 2,500 people. So that, that's if I did that then. Um, I would say, where are you going to be in five years? That's the biggest thing. Where are you going to be in five years? I could tell you, I knew where I was going to be in five years at the exact same place I was five years ago. 
building my team, running my team, working 80 hours a week, trying to beg agents to be successful. Uh, if there's no residual, there's no exit strategy for a real estate team, a broker, or even a team. So if, you, if you're looking for some sort of way out of this business, then I would highly take a look at this. And I'm glad to talk to anybody, uh, regardless of who your sponsor is, and guide you through a lot more detail of why I did what I did. Because there's a lot more involved with doing it from a revenue standpoint. Uh, you know, brokers have splits. You lose the split. You've got to have a way of offsetting that. And I can help you with that. Awesome, man. That is a pearl. Um, it has been. This has been actually one of my favorite conversations. And I do appreciate you sharing your story. I, I do think it will uh, definitely help uh, people who watch and listen to this. Mitch, how can people connect with you if they have questions about EXP or um, or anything else for that matter? Sure. Uh, best way is my, my email, uh, Mitch at MitchRealty.com. I actually have about 10 emails, but that's the easiest one to remember. So Mitch at MitchRealty.com. Um, I mean, I answer emails all the time. Uh, I'm glad to set up a phone call with anybody to have a conversation. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you so much again, Mitch, for sharing. And listen, I look forward to hopefully running into you in New Orleans in October. Yeah, let's make sure we do that. All right, my friend. Thanks so much. Thank you.